It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? This is the 10 o'clock news. New York's number one primetime news. Jimmy Stewart, a real-life war hero. On screen, the quiet hero next door. Decent, God-fearing, and courageous. You've given me a wonderful life. God bless you. No, thank you, Jimmy. Good evening, I'm Rosanna Scotto. John's on vacation. Harry Martin joins me. For a lot of Americans, it may feel like the guy next door died. That's right. Jimmy Stewart had that effect on people. He didn't seem to be acting. He was just a real person. He started as a Broadway actor, and tonight theaters dimmed their lights in tribute. He passed away at his home in Beverly Hills. He was 89. Ed Miller is here with more. Ed? Jimmy Stewart was the Tom Hanks, the Harrison Ford of his day. Like Stewart, both Hanks and Ford very carefully choose their roles, almost always playing the tough but fair American. Not so suave or cool, but incredibly sincere. And I'm going to stay right here and fight for this lost cause. Jimmy Stewart was never polished, elegant, or romantic. He was lanky and somewhat bumbling, but his natural charm and clever choice of film roles made him a Hollywood legend. Long before anti-heroes like Sylvester Stallone, Al Pacino, and Dustin Hoffman, Jimmy Stewart gave us the honorable, courageous, decent man. A belief in, in the value of hard work, I, I think that's very important. There it goes back to my family. Pennsylvania 6, 5,000. Over and over you saw him play this basically good man, a good American trying to do the right thing, not always succeeding, uh, but, but always trying. Staunch conservative and loyal patriot, Jimmy Stewart, one of the few stars to ever see battle. During World War II, he flew dozens of bombing missions over Germany. In the 1970s, he lost a son to Vietnam. Give your hand there. Don't slip. In the beginning of his career, he frequently played absent-minded characters. He sang and danced in one film. It does seem a shame. And saddled up in several other westerns. In 1940, he walks away with the Academy Award for playing a street-smart reporter opposite rich girl Katherine Hepburn in The Philadelphia Story. What goes on? you got tears in your eyes. Altogether, he makes 75 films, some of the most memorable coming in the 1950s when Alfred Hitchcock signs him up for Vertigo and Rear Window. All right, now you tell me where she is. He remains a bachelor until he was 41 years old when he married Gloria Hattrick. They were together for 44 years. I think the acting is kind of like a bug. I think it bites you and you, uh, you don't get over it. With great humility, Stewart often told friends he's just a lucky guy who had a wonderful life, a reference to his favorite film in which he plays a suicidal businessman who learns what's really important in life with the help of an angel. Jimmy Stewart started out by acting in The Family Basement, later in Boy Scout Productions and at Princeton University. One of my favorite Stewart stories is how he once confided to someone his deep down fear that people would one day figure out he's not such a great actor. He was a great actor. His genius was making it look easy. Rosanna. You said it, Ed. Thank you. Well, the news quickly spread in Hollywood that one of its greatest stars had died. Flowers were delivered to the Stewart home where he passed away and where his stepson and twin daughters had a message for his fans. We would like to thank the public for the support and affection they gave to our father over many, many years. It has meant a great deal to him and a great deal to the whole family. He conducted both his career and his life with infinite grace. That was one of the hallmarks of his character. And flowers were placed on Jimmy Stewart's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His family says funeral arrangements are still being made. A mob turncoat says he made frequent death drives to New York from Philadelphia so he could get orders from Vincent the Chin Gigante on who should die back home. The only problem, he never actually talked with the Chin. Mike Sheehan reports. Philip Leonetti was known among his ex-friends in organized crime as Crazy Phil, a handle earned by ordering the murders of eight men and the personal execution of two. In a deal with the feds, Crazy Phil did a whopping five years, five months in the can in exchange for his testimony. Leonetti told a jury he joined the Bruno family and followed his uncle Nick, little Nicky Scarfo, up the ladder of crime. In 1980, Philadelphia mob boss Angelo Bruno was blown away right in front of his home in an unsanctioned hit. 
Scarfo was summoned to New York for a meeting with Vincent Chin Giganti and others, according to Leonetti. He testified that his uncle said Chin told him to kill everyone involved in the killing of Angelo Bruno. Everybody. Leonetti further testified that although rising to become underboss of the Bruno family, he never actually met the Chin, nor did he ever speak directly to him. He's never talked to my brother. He doesn't know my brother. He probably met my brother today for the first time in the courtroom. I uh, don't see any credibility anywhere, and I think the judge, uh, by using the word be skeptical of what these people say, said it all for us. Leonetti will face a very tough cross-examination beginning tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, the government is still negotiating with its other star witness, Sammy the Bull Gravano, who says he'd rather take the contempt charge than face cross-examination about his book deal. From Brooklyn Federal Court, Mike Sheehan, Fox News. A handwritten change in the Warren Commission report has rekindled the conspiracy theory surrounding the assassination of President Kennedy. Then Congressman Gerald Ford changed the line to read the bullet hit the president in the back of the neck. The original sentence read, it hit the president's back above the shoulder. Well, that strengthened the conclusion that the same bullet hit Governor Connolly. Mr. Ford's notes were a part of thousands of pages that were released today. The mystery surrounding the missing nameplate on O.J. Simpson's Heisman Trophy has been solved. Simpson's sports memorabilia agent says that he's got it and he's not giving it up. The agent took it and other stuff from Simpson's estate before the, sh the sheriff seized all of O.J.'s property. He says that he took the items because Simpson still owes him money. The family of the late Myrna Lebov is striking back against her husband, George Delory. He helped her commit suicide using pills. He spent four months in jail, then wrote a book telling that he actually suffocated her with a plastic bag. Well, now her family wants $10 million and all the money from the book. No matter which side of the political issue of, uh, assist, about physician-assisted suicide you favor, Myrna's case was an abuse. Now we know it was even worse. It was murder. Myrna was suffering from multiple sclerosis. She was 52 years old. Here's home video of a woman believed to be one of Doc Dr. Jack Kevorkian's two latest suicide patients, Lynn Dawn Lennox of Lakewood, New Jersey. She also had multiple sclerosis. Police found her in a suburban Detroit motel room. They found another woman's body at a motel some miles away. Kevorkian's lawyer refused to directly implicate his client, but said everyone understands what Dr. Kevorkian does in cases like this. People in one New Jersey community had said that they had death at the door, and now a big chemical company has left millions on their doorstep as a settlement. Christopher Jones is in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, where DuPont used to have a munitions factory. Chris? Harry, it's one of the largest environmental settlements in the history of New Jersey, but there are still all kinds of people here who are angry and frightened about what the future might hold. Just one day in 1990, the DuPont come down and, and uh, knocked on my door and told me that uh, they just messed up my life. The $38.5 million settlement is intended to compensate 421 past and present residents of DuPont Village, bordering on the now-closed DuPont munitions plant. But while the median award was $85,000 a person, the money did not mean no worries. Well, they're saying that, like, they're cleaning it all up, but we're, everybody in our neighborhood and everything and our relatives are still worried that there's still stuff around stuff. Not everyone living in DuPont Village joined in the lawsuit or its rewards. Don't sleep. Irritable. It pains in my hands and my knees, my back. And I'm scared. I'm only 35 years old. I don't want to die of this stuff. The residents charged DuPont's Pompton Lakes Works burned toxic waste in open pits or dumped it into a stream that is now called Acid Brook. I'm not really angry with them, but uh, something if something was wrong with me, I'd be angry with them. 54-year-old Paul Dow lost his wife to cancer. The money that they gave me, it's not enough. I'd give every cent of it back if I could have my wife back. Despite the millions they have paid out, DuPont denies any responsibility for the deaths or disabilities here. But one of the plaintiff's lawyers says there is so much lead in some of the girls' bones who live here, they've been devised against ever having children. I'm Christopher Jones, Fox News. Thank you, Chris. A big scare forced cops to evacuate a warehouse in Astoria, Queens. Police discovered a suspicious package there on Steinway Street while they were searching the basement. It turned out to be a rocket launcher. The bomb squad took it out of the building without any problems. 
There was another evacuation this morning, this one at New York University in Greenwich Village. A building was emptied after a jar of acid was spilled in a laboratory. School officials say this type of acid isn't dangerous as a liquid, but it is explosive when it crystallizes. No one got hurt. Staten Island President Guy Molinari is battling prostate cancer, but he says that he feels good and he feels strong, and he will continue with his normal schedule. Molinari is running for re-election this fall. He's going to have more tests in a few days to figure out what his treatment is going to be. And City Council Speaker Peter Vallone isn't talking, but friends say that he is definitely running for governor. That would probably put him in a Democratic primary battle with Carl McCall for the right to face Governor Pataki. Vallone previously only said that he was thinking about running. Well, the Fed's decided not to raise interest rates, and Wall Street liked that news. The Dow shot up 73 points. Winners beat out losers on the big board by a margin of 2 to 1. The price of an average share was up 54 cents on the New York Exchange, up 9 cents on the American. NASDAQ Composite set a new record, closing up 17 points. Should you tip this guy if he parks your car? He's the Yankee boss, but he's been bossing around the cars in the team parking lot. Penny Crone tried to find out why. So you're a good guy after all, huh? Of course. No, I just want people to be able to get in and out of here. He's probably the last person you'd expect to see directing traffic, but George Steinbrenner has a new mission. It's to keep cars in and around Yankee Stadium moving. How are you? Penny, what How? are you doing wandering around these streets? Well, Mr. Are you a streetwalker? Oh, well, I'm going to walk with you if that's uh, all right. You're a streetwalker, I think huh? you're... No, Mr. Steinbrenner, I'm a reporter trying to find you, and today it was easy. I wouldn't want to stay and come here to a ball game the way it was the other night. And here's what happened the other night to the Yankee owner. He was double parked. A car blocked his auto, and it took him an hour to get onto the highway. Since then, Steinbrenner is making absolutely sure no one but players and big shots park in the lot across the street from the player's entrance. Hey, Derek, you know, the boss has been out here to make sure you're parking right. <laughs> Did you know that George Steinbrenner's been sitting out here? I had no idea. You had no idea? Uh, I'm parking all right, though. You think you have a oh, permit oh, oh. to park in here? Yeah, yeah. I got okay. two of them. As Derek Jeter signed tons and tons of autographs, his boss walked and walked and walked all around Yankee Stadium, checking every car in sight. This is our car. Which one? This one right here. <laughs> Since Monday, Steinbrenner has changed a lot of parking rules. The press can only park on one side of the street, and if you're illegally parked, you're out of there. So maybe this is optimistic you're going to stay in the Bronx. Is that a good indication? Oh, that's... That's a, it doesn't signify anything on that. It's right now getting people home and in here. The big question now, is George Steinbrenner planning on running for office? Or maybe he wants to be New York City's traffic commissioner. I think we can go right to the end of the garage and go right in. Yeah. You know who that is? That's Mr. Steinbrenner. She doesn't care. She oh, doesn't care. Right. You didn't know that was Mr. Steinbrenner? I was a I'm Penny Crone, Fox News. Real hands-on kind of guy. And also, Penny yeah. just wouldn't leave him alone. I know, she's He was right walking there. fast, and she still <laughs> caught up to him. All right, still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, the city sign of the times. No, not these old confusing ones. We'll see if their new ones are really easier. It wasn't Tyson Holyfield, but democracy has its own sound and fury. We will show you the whole bout. This little guy would love to be playing outside, but because of his condition, he can't. Who can help? NASA has the right stuff. Stay tuned for Stephen's story. Now, Nick has the first on Fox forecast. Nikki. All right, Rosanna, it wasn't the greatest day to be outside. We did have some showers around. This is what's left on the Doppler radar. You can see the showers hitting up into New England. Still a couple of sprinkles there in New Jersey, then a break, and then look at this. Big storms in western New York and West Virginia, a sign of some possible things to come. Now, overnight forecast, though, just a couple of showers. The fog might be thick near the coast. Our overnight low of 70 degrees. And as we head on into our forecast for tomorrow, you're also going to find that, again, things should be definitely uh, a little bit on the improving side with a little sun, but look out for those late boomers, 82 the high. Weekend forecast, holiday weekend forecast is coming your way in details when the 10 o'clock news continues. You stay with us. It's really all I am to you, is it? Of course, it is. Are you sure? Why, yes, yes, of course. Golly. Closed captioning is brought to you in partnership with Dial-A-Mattress. For the best price on name brand mattresses, just dial 1-800-MATTRESS and leave off the last S for savings. Family outing? Where to? A taxidermy exhibit? Bad call! 
consider Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom. World-class coasters. Steel Force, the ultimate mega coaster. Truly awesome. 11 intense water slides. Mammoth wave pool. Drenching water rides. Buku Kid stuff. Dozens of rides. Baron Stain Bear Country. It spills. It thrills. It's wet. It's dry. Enjoy those stuffed creatures. Which way to Dorney Park? Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom. Catch Dorney's spectacular laser light show. Nightly at 9.35. Coming up. Welcome back, Carter. And she's got a hot guest, Robin and Will, later on the 10 o'clock news. Tomorrow on Good Day New York, picture perfect, shoot like a professional photographer, plus exotic plants. Do they hold tips for better health? Good Day, tomorrow at 6 on Fox 5. The IKEA twice a year sale ends Sunday, July 6th at 7 p.m. So hurry in. We're doing a massive clearance to make room for exciting new merchandise. Save up to 50% off IKEA's everyday low prices on selected items throughout the store. We offer the best possible values every day, so savings like these are nothing short of incredible. Don't miss it. By the time our next sale rolls around, you'll be searching for cards that convey season's greetings in a politically correct yet festive way. Open 4th of July. <laughs> Ask your veterinarian for Advantage. Advantage. Don't give fleas a biting chance. <laughs> We have breaking news from the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn tonight. Federal agents and New York police detectives have been digging in a vacant lot at North 7th Street and Kent Avenue. Now, it's reported that they have found two bodies here so far. No word on what brought the police to this particular lot. The city can't promise it will be any easier to find a parking spot, but come September, it will be a lot easier to figure out if the space you find is legal, so you won't get a ticket. Susan Kelleher reports. Some New York City parking signs need no explanation, but others like this one need the expertise of a traffic engineer. No fewer than five signs delegate parking on this small block, enough to scare away some drivers, but not Kathy Kasu, who seeks out the same metered space every day. Process of elimination, as long as I don't get a ticket, I know I'm okay. So this is a tried and true parking spot? Yes. The Department of Transportation today unveiled what they hope is an end to the confusion. Officials say street cleaning signs that contradicted alternate side of the street signs have been removed. And on days when street cleaning rules are suspended, alternate side parking will be as well. Starting the first week of September, when you hear the word suspended, and you have these kind of signs on your street, it's suspended. That's it. You don't have to worry about it. Come early September, you may find it a little easier to find a place to park. Officials say these new rules will create hundreds more parking spaces in every borough except Manhattan, where many say we need it most and parking is at a premium. But for Manhattanites and everyone else, officials hope the new, more consistent parking signs will put an end to undeserved parking tickets. The issue here was to remove the whole question of unfair surprise and unfair ticketing. In Manhattan, Susan Kelleher, Fox News. In Taiwan, the National Assembly is having a tough time agreeing on a new constitution. How tough? Take a look at this. When the smoke cleared, one deputy had a gash down the back of his neck. Another was taken to the hospital unconscious. They are both in stable condition tonight. Meanwhile, in Japan, they're fighting waves of oil that are washing ashore. A super tanker ran aground in Tokyo Bay and spilled almost 4 million gallons of crude oil. The slick is more than three miles wide. It's moving towards some of the richest fishing areas around Japan. The government's calling it the worst spill in the country's history. Another disaster, this one in Pakistan. A five-story building collapsed in the city of Karachi with about 45 people inside. Remarkably, rescue workers pulled nine men safely out of the rubble. They're still trying to find the others. So far, officials aren't sure what caused the collapse. Two workers were killed when a bridge they were repairing collapsed in West Virginia. Three others were hurt. One of the steel beams fell 100 feet onto a crane. No word yet on why it happened. Well, there was a, tr a huge train wreck in Kansas that killed an engineer. Burnt and mangled cars stretched along a half mile of track there. A 
freight train carrying explosive chemicals was unable to stop at a crossing. It slammed into the side of another freight train, and that touched off a huge fire, and a thousand people had to be evacuated. In Westchester, all 26 beaches on the Long Island Sound were reopened. They had been closed since Saturday when the Coast Guard found more raw sewage floating offshore. Chopper 5 found the slick is still there, but health officials insist the water is safe for swimming. Cops busted two people for transporting illegal fireworks. They pulled over Vincent Marino and Linda Santiago in East Northport, Long Island. Cops say you could see the boxes clearly labeled fireworks through their car's rear window. Six boxes were confiscated. And while the cops have uh, cleared the streets of illegal stuff, Macy's has a barge load of huge powered fireworks just waiting for Friday night. Millions of people are going to be waiting, waiting on the waterfront to watch, and Cynthia Santana reports. There's a lot of bang going on this year. And a lot of magic, thanks to these guys, Pyro Spectaculars. <laughs> the family-owned business is loading four barges with more than 40,000 pounds of firepower, guaranteed to light up the skies over the East River this 4th of July. We brought four, uh, four semi-trucks out here full of equipment and, and aerial displays from 13 different countries around the world. 17,000 aerial displays making Macy's 21st Annual Spectacular, the largest show in New York to date and the largest in the country. And it's all done with a touch of a button by computer. Crews in these steel bunkers will use laptops to launch the fireworks in sync with the music. All the months of work put into the show and the countless hours to get these four barges ready will all be over in a half an hour. So when you're looking up, don't forget to look around at the 60-foot-tall Statue of Liberty and all the other surprises in store, because this promises to be one birthday party you won't forget. Cynthia Santana, Fox News. On Friday, we're going to be the visitors from another planet. This is animation released today of what the Pathfinder spacecraft will be doing on Mars. It lands on Independence Day, releasing a six-wheeled rover. Scientists on Earth will drive it by remote control as it roams the Martian surface for signs of life or evidence of past life on the Red Planet. Well, here's a shot you've never seen before from inside the shuttle Columbia as it lifted off. It's not really a bumpy ride. They're slipping into zero gravity as the solid rocket boosters separate. The crew is on a scientific mission that was cut short back in April. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, Disney's big dilemma. Oh, look at that big fat robin. What's so offensive about Mr. Magoo that thousands are protesting the movie? If you're heading for the rent-a-car counter, don't make a mistake that could keep you in debt. No clicking. We'll be right back. Once a magical land was enslaved by evil. You have poisoned my house. Ruled by a king without mercy. And a woman without a soul. What are you doing? Purifying myself. Now, act like a king. They have vowed to destroy the only hero who can unite their people against them. There are too many tribes for one man. There won't be one man. The epic battle will begin. War premieres Monday, July 14th on Fox 5. Morning, my name's Mandy. I'll be your waitress. Can I uh, take your order? Yeah. Do you have any specials? Yeah, we got three eggs, any style. Uh, two strips of bacon, two sausage, three cheese omelet, big slab of Canadian bacon smothered in hollandaise sauce, scrambled egg with cheese, sausage, and a mountain of butter, corned beef hash, grits, and extra What if you didn't have to grapes? worry about managing your cholesterol? Top, of course. Or there's the uh, butter. Empire Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Coming up, New York's number one meets some future firefighters. And art imitates life, all in a New York minute. Is jobless Paul being too choosy? So I have to be very selective about where I go next. Don't forget unemployment. Mad About You, tonight at 11.30 on Fox 5. What's it take to rule the air and win the New York news war? You've got to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee.
York's air superiority. This July 4th, your friendly Dodge dealer is parading out one of the best formations of Dodge deals this year. Like our lowest long-term interest rates ever on Dodge Neon, Stratus, and Intrepid. And up to $1,000 cash back on Caravan. You can also get up to $1,350 off select Magnum V6 Dakotas. Just march on down to the friendly Dodge dealer near you before this parade rests. The Dodge 4th of July event. Hurry in. American Airlines says kids two and under can fly at half price. The idea is to encourage parents to bring along safety seats for the little ones instead of holding the kids on their laps. Safety experts say the seat is a much better place to be in case of turbulence or an accident. Northwest Airlines and U.S. Airways are matching the offer. If you're planning a road trip this summer, you'll be paying less for a gallon of gas. The city's Consumer Affairs Department says gas prices are down 7 or 8 cents from last year. The price drop is a bit more upstate, about 10 cents a gallon. If you're planning on renting a car for the long holiday weekend, don't sign anything until you see tonight's Fox Business Report. When you step up to the rental counter, do you buy the insurance? My company covers it. No, it's covered through our company policy. But what happens when you're on vacation? Do you get the insurance? I do because I think I'm not covered. If all of this is leaving you a bit confused, you're not alone. Even the experts say it depends. This is perhaps the most confusing thing in the world of travel, is whether or not you should buy the car rental insurance. If you think your credit card is going to cover you if you crash a rental car or it gets stolen, the answer is maybe. Car rental insurance is one of the great benefits um, of using a credit or charge card that, that actually carries that benefit. You need to be aware that some credit cards only cover you for collision and theft, but not for liability. So, in other words, they'll pay to have the rental car fixed, but they won't cover you for the whiplash suits after you run into the bus filled with trial lawyers. Some credit cards won't cover you in some countries. And if you're counting on your personal car insurance to cover you, be careful. If you drive a car and you have insurance, you would be covered when you rent a car. Gene Salvatore is with the Insurance Information Institute. Where people get in trouble is they have a car and yes, they have insurance, but they only have liability coverage. They don't have comprehensive or collision. In other words, if you're not insured for theft on your personal car, you're not covered on the rental car either. Also, if you own and insure a cheap car, but you rent an expensive car, well, you could be liable for the difference. Bottom line? The most important thing, know what you're going to do before you get to the rental car counter. While insurance can add 60% to the cost of your rental car, not being covered can cost you a whole lot more. And that's tonight's Fox Business Report. I'm walking. The moral, the moral is, don't get in an accident. <laughs> right. All right. Coming up, you're going to meet a special little guy who spent most of his life inside. Now NASA may step in to give him what he wants most. And leave it to a New Yorker, this artwork's got quite a caption. We'll show it to you in a minute. Step away from your busted-ass vehicle and put your hands on your head. You heard him. Will Smith ah. talks tough with aliens. But he's a sweetheart with Robin. Check out her report later on. We'll be right back. News. Robin's back, and so is Hollywood's hippest alien buster. Coming! Magoo resident. Mr. Magoo's coming back, too, but not everyone's happy about that. Plus, why do so many people want to move to New York City? And will NASA come through for little Stevie and give him what he's always wanted? This is the 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. The NASA space program could help someone in Connecticut take the biggest trip of his life, to step outside. He's just two years old. He has a rare medical problem. He needs constant air conditioning in weather like this, and now his parents are hoping our space program can help fulfill his wish. Bob O'Brien is at the family's home in Stamford, Connecticut. Bob? Harry, there is a great little boy who lives in this Stamford apartment building, but he has a rare genetic disorder that pretty much forces him to stay inside when it's hot outside. When some kids are enjoying a summer afternoon in the playground on one side of Spruce Street, there's usually someone watching from a second floor apartment across the street. Two and a half year old Stephen Baez spends a lot of time looking out his living room window. 
He cannot go outside in the heat because he was born without sweat glands and cannot perspire, the body's natural way of cooling itself. It breaks my heart that he is confined to this house 24 hours a day, and he was confined to this room for the last two months, not only 24 hours a day, but seven days a week. Because of the heat? Yes. Until today, the living room was the only air-conditioned room because Stephen's folks could not convince their Medicaid-funded HMO to provide them with a second air conditioner. But now, Stephen's plight has been told on local TV, radio, and newspapers a new air conditioner has been donated, allowing Stephen to go upstairs to the now air-conditioned bedroom he shares with his mother. Some space-age help is also on the way. Stephen is third on a national list to get a special cooling vest from NASA that's lined with ice packs that will let him play outside. He can go out in the shade no matter how hot it is. He can go outside for two hours. Until the space vest arrives, Stephen will have to be content playing basketball in his living room or watching all his favorite sports on TV. Stephen, what do we like to watch on TV? Baseball. 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 And what else do we like to watch? To a basketball. Yeah, and baseball. what else? Do you like basketball? Basketball. Stephen's grandmother's next goal is to get her car air conditioned so they can take the little guy out to see some real outdoor summer ball games in person. In Stanford, Connecticut, Bob O'Brien, Fox News. Okay, thank you, Bob. Mike Tyson isn't the only boxer in trouble. So is the IBF junior lightweight champion, Arturo Gatti. Police in Union City, New Jersey say he led them on a high-speed chase, then punched a couple of cops and threatened to kill them. He refused to take a breathalyzer test and faces a long list of charges. Arturo Gatti's just a lightweight compared with Mike Tyson. Today, the man with a heavyweight appetite showed up in New York just in time for a New York Minute. Ripped from the ring and splattered on a Lower East Side wall, Mike Tyson, bloody ear and all, scowling down at passers-by. It's the work of street artist Andre Charles, and the title says it all. If you can't beat him, eat him. A day to shine for New York's bravest. The fire department named 57 new firefighters out on Randall's Island today, along with one very special one. Lieutenant James F. Hayes, Ladder Company 44. Lieutenant Hayes surely needs the raise that comes with his new rank. You see, he's the proud new father of quadruplets. Maybe a couple of future firefighters among them. Out at Flushing Meadows, a great day to be a kid. Tykes got their first chance to try out the new Hall of Science playground. It's the largest hands-on exhibit in the Western Hemisphere. Rudy says New York is tops in tourism. The mayor unveiled some revised numbers today. They show tourism up 5% over last year. And that's our New York Minute. Well, it's not just a nice place to visit. More and more people want to live here. I can't blame them, Harry. Up next, why there's a land rush going on with New York, the prime destination. And then the group that's making it easier to get abortion pills. Details in our Alive and Well section. <laughs> Somebody will listen to me. Time is running out on the biggest savings event of the season, the Fortune Up Backyard Store Clearance. Save 25 to 60% on select outdoor furniture. Save on aluminum dining sets, European resin sets. Save on cast aluminum, indoor-outdoor wicker, our exclusive wood dining sets. Save on replacement cushions, patio and beach umbrellas. Save 25 to 60% off Fortune Up's already low prices. Hurry in, time is running out. The Fortune Up Backyard Store Clearance Event. There's never been a better time to find more motivated workers, to find safe neighborhoods to work and live in, or clean parks to play in. There's never been a better time to find a local government dedicated to helping your business grow in a city that's the world's banking, arts, and entertainment capital, with streets now safer than in any other major city in America, and more resources than ever. There's never been a better time to do business in New York City, the business capital of the world. Leave the world behind with a new Isuzu Rodeo for $248 a month for 36 months and $1,043 due at least signing. It's all happening now during Isuzu's Great Escape event, which just got even greater with exceptional offers on every Isuzu vehicle we sell. Steve, hold 
speed ahead. Got it. Ever notice how some companies stay on course, no matter what the pace? Help to have the right crew. With Sprint, you'll find new ideas and people will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Has the data network cut production time? Sure, now our designers collaborate online. How about your suppliers? Tokyo's online now. We're right on schedule. Count on your Sprint team to keep your business moving forward. Gail, you ready for a test drive? Let's go for it. We help your business do more business. Call Sprint Business. You're not having any fun! People Magazine says Face Off is a complete and total blast. The New York Times says it's a mega movie that actually delivers strong characters, breathless action, and a gimmick that hasn't been seen before. When all else fails, fresh tactics. And Siskel and Ebert give Face Off two thumbs up. Woo! John Travolta, Nicolas Cage. Whee! Face Off, rated R. Now playing everywhere. In tonight's Alive and Well report, the abortion pill becomes a test case. The abortion rights mobilization group first offered it to 1,000 women in clinical trials. Now they want to make it available to 10,000 more free of charge. You know, our success rate is over 98%. That's higher than Britain, France, and Sweden, which is 95%. The FDA has declared the drug safe and effective, but it won't be approved till the distributor finds a manufacturer. A report is linking some asthma drugs to serious eye problems. Researchers studied 3,000 people from Sydney, Australia. They found asthmatics who used inhaled steroids had a three times greater chance of developing cataracts than those who didn't use the steroids. But doctors emphasize the risk is still low. New York used to be a nice place to visit, but not to live. And oh, how the times have changed. More people are visiting, and now a survey claims that more people, especially under 40, want to stay. Shepard Smith reports. Where would you really like to live? Anywhere in the country. San Francisco, the water, the attitude. Orlando, family friendly, the mouse, all that. Maybe Chicago for some hoop, or Seattle for some tunes. Well, they're all on a list from a Harris poll out this morning, but on top, the number one jonesing to get out of here and slide into their city in all of America? New York is where I'd rather stay. Whatever happened, a nice place to visit wouldn't want to live there. Well, apparently, a lot of that's changed. You know, they've cleaned up the city to a great degree. They've gotten rid of a lot of the crime, too. But move here? I did that just a few months ago. And let me tell you, it's a hassle. First, you got to find a place to live. Apartments, impossible. Then you got to figure out how to pay for it, which is even more difficult for a million different reasons. So you got the world at your fingertips out there. There's nothing to want for, but it costs a fortune. It's loud. And the truth of the matter is, here in Gotham, we're running out of room. <laughs> Do we have room for them with uh, the most densely populated city in, in America? Mayor Rudy says we'll make room if you can hack it. If I was just coming from Duluth, Minnesota, uh, Boise, Idaho, and I was looking into the city, I'd be a little frightened of it, because I, I, I wouldn't know it. It's crazy. You can do anything you want down there. You make it here, you make it everywhere, because this state is like, is like the dream of the world. You know what I mean? I'm coming here to be a star. I admit it. Moving in today, Eve, if she stole your idea, well, maybe just stay in Duluth. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. In New York, Shepard Smith, Fox News. Shepard may have a point, but this is still <laughs> the still best great. place to live. Absolutely right, great. So, New York's more than just the best place to live. It's also a great place to play. Just to ask Keanu Reeves, we did, and he told us what he thinks of the critics, what they think of his music. That is. Okay, gotcha. And Patrick Ewing sticking around, coming up in sports. Hear from the big man himself why he decided to stay. Hey, Nick, we're enjoying our last two days in New York City. What's the weather going to be like? Well, we've hope you had a nice time, and don't forget to come back, because we want you to come back and visit us again. And the weather for your last two days, kind of typical for New York this time of the year. Humidity is going to be up there, a little sunshine coming through, but... Look at these storms firing up to our west. We may have some trouble here tomorrow. I'll tell you about that. There goes Tropical Storm Anna out to sea. The full forecast is coming your way. Right now, check out the new Dodge Tri-State Commuters forecast for tomorrow. The 
BMW Z3 Roadster. Which road is your road? At your Tri-State BMW retailer, now. I miss the earth so much, I miss my wife. On such a time, that's flight. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time to touch down. Tomorrow on Good Day New York, picture perfect, shoot like a professional photographer, plus exotic plants, do they hold tips for better health? Good Day, tomorrow at 6 on Fox 5. Face Off is imaginative, funny, and moving. This isn't just a thrill ride, it's a rocket. John Travolta and Nicolas Cage really let it rip. Face Off, Richard R., now playing everywhere. What's it take to rule the air and win the New York News War? You've got to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Fox Chopper 5, New York's air superiority. Looks like political correctness has struck again. Well, oh, look at that big fat robin. <laughs> Mr. Magoo oh, yeah. is getting blindsided. Disney's bringing him back in a movie, but the National Federation of the Blind says that there's nothing funny about Mr. Magoo, comparing him to Amos and Andy. The Federation wants the movie stopped. It's telling members to take appropriate action against Disney, but it did stop short of demanding a boycott. Disney says that Mr. B Magoo does not in any way make fun of or demean blind people. Actor turned bass player Keanu Reeves made a quick stop in New York last night with his band Dog Star. Keanu, who shot to start him in the movie Speed, caused an industry stir when he abandoned ship in Speed 2. He supposedly wanted to concentrate on his music. Some critics think he should stick to acting. Keanu says criticism usually doesn't bother him. In general, we don't mind a, a review, good or bad, as long as they're reviewing the music. You know, if they mention songs and talk about songs and stuff like that. It's when we get reviewed that has nothing to do with the songs themselves, so we're just, you know, we dismiss it. Yeah, I hate that, too. Keanu's band has been together for three years. Hollywood's newest leading man is exploding onto the big screen this weekend in an out-of-this-world comedy, Men in Black. And look at who the wind blew in to chat with. And Robin Carter is back and with a vengeance. We missed you, Robin. Hi, Rosette. I missed you as well. It's quite a thrill to be back here. And now, on to a real thriller from the fresh prince of television to the newest crown prince of Hollywood. Will Smith headlines the summer's most anticipated movie that isn't a sequel. And these days, for the 28-year-old newly minted superstar, where there's a will, there's usually a mega hit. Did you ever expect this? Are you surprised by all this? I'm really surprised. I'm just like, I'm acting cool, though. You know, I'm, that's my cool look. I make this look good. This is real willpower in action. It's pandemonium as moviedom's hippest alien buster invades Manhattan to hype his new movie, Men in Black. That's what I call a close encounter. Will's explosive rise to the top was born on the 4th of July as last summer's money-making machine Independence Day catapulted him into Hollywood's newest summer box office hero and its latest $15 million man. You are in the mega $15 million movie range. What does that feel like? Well, I do this for the art of it. It's not about the money. It's about, it's about the art. I say, yeah, right. <laughs> Step away from your busted-ass vehicle and put your hands on your head. 
Hollywood veteran Tommy Lee Jones, who teams with Will as sci-fi super agents battling aliens in Men in Black's intergalactic blowout, thinks he knows the secret to this young gun's success. Oh, he's a wonderful young man. He comes to work and, and really bears down until everybody on that set is happy. He's very uh, generous. He's very, very kind. He's completely guileless and very smart. I really admire that young man. Man in black. Oh, man. And what's not to admire? Will Smith is the new man of the moment with another surefire summer blockbuster on his hands and a hot single from the movie soundtrack. He's the guy who's got it all, including live in love, actress Jada Pinkett. <laughs> my sweetie, my sweetie just looks so good, you know? She just looks so good. No, we're good together, baby. And just how hot is Will Smith right now? Well, Men in Black director Barry Sonnenfeld, who directed The Addams Family, says he never wants to do another movie without Will Smith. That is, if he wants to have a hit. And they will be, in fact, teaming up again for the movie version of the 60s TV series, The Wild Wild West. Harry and Rosanna, back to you. All right, Robin, okay, Robin. I'm with a couple of Men in Black, too, here. Yeah, I got a prop, too. Tonight. Did you get your prop? Oh, no, I don't have props. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Harry. sunglasses. I'm saving my props for the Do we need the, the sunglasses weather. for tomorrow? You will that's need them for a portion of tomorrow, yes. And we'll have some more props that you might need, too. <laughs> a little umbrella wow. action might work as well. Let's check New York today. You needed the umbrellas. The showers were there. 77, 69 in New York today. 607 inch of rain and the records of 156. Uh, well, it's almost set about 90 years apart. Right now in New York City, it is uh, rather cloudy. 73, humidity is high again. Wind out of the south and the pressure steady. 2984. Okay, let's go and check out our satellite photo. Again, the big storms continue to plague the upper parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes area. Look at all this dry weather, though, in the midsection of the country. A lot of that is in our upcoming forecast as well. It's just getting there. That's the problem. That's Tropical Storm Anna. That's heading out to sea. We're not going to worry about that. What we will worry about, though, is this front that's off to the west. Again, the drier air, at least a bit of drier air behind it. And as that front has been pushing through the Ohio Valley, look at these thunderstorms. These have been big, producing tornadoes in Michigan and strong, severe thunderstorms in Ohio and West Virginia. And it's not out of the question that we get some big storms around here tomorrow. Again, as that front continues to push on from the west to the east. There's a little break in the action, though. Again, we're sort of in that right now with just a couple of showers that have been out there. But again, these clouds are building back to the west. Doppler radar showing a couple of showers still in western Jersey. They're, again, sort of here and there, but the bigger storms, again, across western New York, back into West Virginia, all associated with this front moving in from the Great Lakes. So tomorrow, it's still humid. We'll have a little sunshine, but a lot of clouds still around. And again, the shower and thunderstorm threat really late in the day in the humidity. Mild air across the Great Lakes and cooler air dropping it across the northern sections of Wisconsin. That front by Friday, though, will push on through. Another front behind it, a little bit weaker, but still that could trigger a thunder shower late Friday afternoon, but it should dry out in time for the fireworks. How about your shore cast for the Jersey Shore? 80 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, looking pretty nice. And as we head in towards Long Island, about the same. Temperatures near 80 with, again, decent weather, especially Saturday and Sunday. And if you're heading up to the mountains, it looks pretty nice there as well with temperatures in the upper to mid 70s. Here's my forecast for New York City overnight 70 with some showers, areas of fog, 60s in the suburbs. Tomorrow, again, 71 when you wake up, 77 at lunchtime, clouds and fog in the morning, then some sun breaking out, but that will fire up big thunderstorms late in the day. Watch out for them, high 82. 83 Friday, again, still the risk of a late day thunder shower, uh, but then the weekend looks great. 83 Saturday, 81 Sunday, the humidity will drop off with the sunshine increasing. So again, most of this upcoming holiday weekend is okay. Of course, we'll check it again for you tomorrow. Harry and Rosanna. Okay, Nick, thank you very much. All right. And there's much more ahead on the 10 o'clock news. A tough day in the Bronx for the home team. You can say that again. The Braves put their ace on the mound, and he mowed them down. Tom McDonald is up next with a look at the <laughs> Yankee game. Friend's wedding is a sparkler of a romantic comedy. Oh. Siskel and Ebert give it two thumbs up. <laughs> My best friend's wedding. I love it. Rated PG-13. Now playing in theaters everywhere. On July 2nd, we are the Men in Black. Tommy Lee Jones. 
Do you have any idea how much that stings? Will Smith. There's only one way off of this planet, baby. And that's through me. Men in Black. Rated PG-13. Now playing in theaters everywhere. It was an age of innocence. I love you, Claire. An age of beauty. I'm with you, always. But nothing lasts forever. You killed everyone I ever loved. Now, one man will unite a nation. We are people that will not be broken and will never be silenced. Against the darkest forces on Earth, feel the passion. Did the blood make you feel stronger? Witness the power. Go! Hear the roar. Roar premieres Monday, July 14th on Fox 5. Ole, 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 ole. Toyota! Toyota's hot, hot, hot. It's July 4th weekend and this hot party's out of control. Toyota Savings are lighting everyone's fire. No wonder, with 6.9% financing on 4Runner, rugged, roomy, hot, or choose RAV4 and get 6.9% financing, too. Toyota's hot, hot, It's 4th of July weekend, but these fireworks will be over before you know it, so join the party at Toyota now. Morning, my name's Mandy. I'll be your waitress. Can I uh, take your order? Yeah. Do you have any specials? Yeah, we got three eggs, any style, uh, two strips of bacon, two sausage, three cheese omelet, big slab of Canadian bacon smothered in hollandaise sauce, scrambled egg with cheese, sausage, and a mountain of butter, corned beef hash, grits, and extra What if you didn't have to worry grits? about managing your cholesterol? Top, of course. Or there's the uh, butter. Empire Blue Cross and Blue Shield. This portion of the news brought to you by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. It's my turn to think of the best Nobody Beats the Wiz 4th of July sale ever. It's got to be hot, American, patriotic, like every TV on sale, and air conditioners, too. Wait a second. I could put the whole store on sale. Yeah, everything. All audio, home office, VCRs, camcorders, music and movies, every product on sale. I'm a genius. This 4th of July sale is the best ever because it's my sale and it proves I'm the best. Everything's on sale now at Nobody Beats the Wiz. Winner! Tommy's here tonight with good news for Knicks fans. Well, good news for Patrick Ewing, especially because the big fella re-signed with the Knickerbockers today. He'll be a Nick till he's 39 years old. Ewing agreed to a new deal that will pay him an average of $16 million a season. At this afternoon, we came to terms with Patrick Ewing and have signed him to a multi-year contract to keep him here where he belongs in a Nick uniform. John Wallace for Patrick Ewing, and it continues. I'm glad um, I'm going to finish my career here in New York, and the fans deserve to get a championship, and um, hopefully that, you know, they'll get one while I'm here. Thanks. So it's one-on-one -on -one with Ewing going at Longley. I don't think this is the last contract, contract that Patrick will sign with Madison Square Garden and the Knicks, but uh, it certainly is uh, um, one of the, uh, the most important, maybe the most important one, the most significant one, and, uh, and we are very happy to have it done. Then it was time for Patrick Ewing to sign on the dotted line with Knicks president Ernie Grunfeld. The contract will last for four years, and when it's over, Patrick Ewing will have been a New York Knickerbocker for 16 years. He'll get an average of around $16 million a season. Gentlemen, we have Needless to say, Patrick so Ewing was all smiles when it was over. Oh, it's definitely a special day. It's a day that, you know, uh, I let everybody know that I'm, I'm back. I mean, everywhere I go uh, since the end of the season, everybody's been asking me, are you coming back? Are you leaving? Now the whole world knows I'm back in New York and I'm going to end my career here. The New Jersey Nets never seem to be able to catch a break. On the day they introduced their brand new star, 6'10", Keith Van Horn, the Knicks upstaged him by re-signing Ewing. Van Horn, the second choice in this year's draft, told me today he can do a lot of things on the basketball floor. Uh, I would just my strength is versatility. Uh, you know, I, I think that I've always, in college, I've always been able to play on the perimeter when big guys are on me and when, when smaller guys are on me, I've always been able to take them in the post. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's one of the big, big reasons why they like me here is because I, could, I, I pose a lot of matchup problems. The American League filled up its all-star team today. Joe Torre named three of his Yankees to go to the all-star game with Tino Martinez, Bernie Williams, David Cohn, Mariano Rivera will represent the Yanks. At the stadium this afternoon, the Yanks sent Doc Gooden to the mound against the Braves. He struck out six in his seven innings of work. 
All three of these games in the series produced top-notch defense. Jeff Blauser made a great play on Paul O'Neill and was able to turn it into a double play. The Braves led by a run in the sixth when Ryan Klesko doubled that lead. He took a good one, pitched deep into the upper deck. Nice catch by the fan up there. Greg Maddox didn't allow the Yankees to score. He pitched a masterpiece. Maddox struck out eight, including Bernie Williams as a pinch hitter. Braves took two out of three from the Yanks, allowing New York only two runs in those games. Score today, Atlanta two, Yankees nothing. The Mets will send two guys to the All-Star game. Todd Hundley and Bobby Jones were selected. That's the only good news we can report about the Mets tonight. They got beat in Detroit again. The Mets looked bad on this play. Alberto Castillo threw down to second. Harry, nobody was covering the play. That'll enable the Curtis Pride to score for the Tigers. And the Mets lost, and they were swept. They lost today 9-7. to seven. Rosanna. Okay, thank you, Tommy. One last word from Nick on what you should wear in the morning. Nikki. Well, Rosanna, the humidity is going to be high once again, so maybe you're going to be hanging out in the parking lot near Yankee Stadium like George Steinbrenner might be doing, so a fan is appropriate to sit next to, loose-fitted clothing, that kind of thing. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Nikki. And that's our report for tonight. I'm Rosanna Scotto. And I'm Harry Martin, and we leave you tonight with a final look at some of Jimmy Stewart's most memorable work. Enjoy it. Good night. Maybe you will be my baby Cause I'm not about you Ink is gonna cost me my best photographer And you a big assignment Well, where? Well, there's no point in even talking about it With that cast on? You don't Oh, stop sounding stoppy Oh, 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 I know Why do you wish your brother was here? Does he like Kittredge? Everybody likes Kittredge. Everybody likes Kittredge. He wins. That's right. That's right.